Welcome to Rebecca Sounds Reveille. You're going to love today's show because we have a guest returning to share with us some very exciting news. He's a brand ambassador, voice artist, an actor, and executive producer. He is known for Killer Miller. Wait till you hear about this. What's going on with that? The Mad Hatter, Life's Rewards, and Daddy. Ooh, Daddy, we're back. We're going to talk about these things today, and you are going to love it. Let's welcome to the show, Dennis Mallon. Welcome. Thanks, Rebecca. Glad to be back. Thank you so much. I'm excited because along with all of those other things, you have many commercials and multiple film and TV shows that you've done as well. But yeah. we're going to focus on some things today that I think the audience is really going to get a kick out of. And with all of the inspiration and tools and resources that we try to provide to the audience, I think that this is the perfect timing to really bring some joy and some excitement and just some relief of stress with everything that's been going on over the last couple of years. And we sure. do that through entertainment and you deliver it. So tell me what has been going on. Um, it's been, it's been a good run. There's just so much going on. I, you know, I'm daddy. We're back. Got picked up by glued TV. Which this I'm, is so exciting. Which I 25 million subscribers. Um, it, it's, it's, a, you never know. So this is really, it, it could be a career changer. It's, it's exciting to take your art and to bring it to such a medium and to really get it out there in front of a big company like that. So it is. And so let's tell the audience a little bit about this because blue TV, blue TV is really big and the amount of subscribers is going to continue to increase, especially with more people staying at home and people are looking for things that are relatable mm -hmm. and can also just give a distraction of what's going on in their current world. So even though we're kind of, it's kind of a contrast and compare, that's really something that brings home a lot of good memories and oftentimes the ability to make healthy changes in their life. So tell me a little bit about this. Sure, sure. Well, Daddy Went Back was shot during the pandemic. And Angela and Valencia, the uh, the writers, producers, directors, and, and actors, they're my daughters. Now, I come from a, a mixed marriage, okay? So my two Irish twin daughters, they're truly Irish twins born within the same year. They're in their 30s. And life is throwing them a lot of curveballs. You know, one is pregnant by the boyfriend that doesn't want the baby. Uh, other daughter is uh, can't find her way in, in a job and business gets fired. So they basically say, you know, what's the best thing to do? Heck, let's move in with dad. Let's move back with daddy. Daddy, we're back. Daddy's got plenty of room. Daddy's got plenty of money. There's nothing going on. Hey, he doesn't have a life. Let's move back in. So literally the opening scene, I'm shocked to see my daughters, the loves of my life at my door. And at that time, I'm divorced for about a year, the way the series goes. And they're asking me all about my personal life. And I go, funny you should ask. I've got my date coming over. In about a half an hour, you get to meet Phoenix. And so, you know, two alpha females with an alpha female, you can just imagine the dynamic. Now, everybody has their own agenda. Okay. I'm just a happy-go-lucky guy trying to get through life. Try to do my real estate and have fun, but my girlfriend has an agenda. My daughters have an agenda. Other people have an agenda. And here I am trying to be the arbitrator, the go-between. And it just, you can just imagine how life, how drama really just kind of works itself out. The best part about the writing, Rebecca, it's so contemporary. It hits every socioeconomic, ethnic, a uh, cultural issue we're going through today, all within eight episodes, and I and I loved it, and I loved every every bit of it. It's it was interesting in the beginning. You know a lot of you know characters that I play. I like broken characters. I like rough and tumble characters because there's flavor to it, and I can show range. Well, this was the antithesis of what I've always done. So I'm reading the scripts, and I've got to be all right. I need to cry. Oh, I can cry. No, no, you need to cry. And I'm like, all right, I've never played this kind of guy before. All right, Dennis, you're an actor. Go act. Go do what you can do. And the girls love it. 
uh, Glue TV obviously loves it. And uh, I'm just excited for it to come out. You know, I'm excited the, too. Thing. The announcement was just made. So I, I'm assuming over the next week, two weeks. So, but we, the girls already have season two written. So we're waiting to see how season one does. It's really interesting when you are looking at the dynamics of shows that really get a lot of viewership, those that have to do with families and families that sort of have these little twists to them because sure. of how real it is. <laughs> oftentimes you go, you can't make this stuff up. No. But when yeah. you get things that are so close to that kind of a situation that you have at home, they really are engaging and yes. people don't want to miss it. This seems to me like you're going to want to watch episode after episode after episode back to back. You're not going to want to get up. You're going to be glued. That's the whole purpose, right? Glued TV. You know, you're right. When you think about family dynamics and family TV that have really uh, kind of shaken and really the, the viewership and everything else, I think of Roseanne. I just yes. think of Roseanne. Right or wrong. I mean, Roseanne was... Uh, uh, rock rock the entire nation i mean her show how many how what's the viewership for that show when that was on and everything that's going on and every week you didn't know what was going to be said next so you tune in just to see how outrageous but how relatable it really is so that is a lot of it daddy we're back and the dynamics of family now are completely a a larger definition the do sure. defining moments are more within inner relations, whether it's um, man and woman or roommates. And mm -hmm. what brings to mind all of this talk is Three's Company. There because, I mean, that was their family. It was a family unit of the three of them. And it wasn't a typical family, but we're looking at the way our society is now. And there's so many non-typical families. Exactly. And their families, nonetheless. So, what else have you got going on? This is so exciting! Sure. I can't wait sure. to see this. I, I'm, I'm excited to see it too. We we had we had our viewing, uh, I guess, about three four months ago, and it was just it, it was really fun. We had friends and family over their house, and it was good. Uh, Killer Miller, you know, the short we're debuting it December fourth in uh, in Seminole, Florida. I have not seen it yet, but really, all of. <laughs> Here's the funny part. All of Europe has seen it. Uh, right now, it's making the film festival debuts in L.A. But here's the rub. We've won 25 to date best movie awards. I picked up two best actors from this. So you just never know. It's, it's a Western. You know, who does Westerns these days? You know, Clint Eastwood, Timothy Oliphant, Dennis Mallon. It was yes. so much fun to do. I learned how to ride a horse. Uh, we were in a true Western town in Parrish, Florida, Dry Creek, Les McDowell's property. And it was just, it was well-written. R.J. Hendricks II. second. He's got about, I think about four or five books. And it's such a great dynamic. And we had such a great cast, such a great crew. The word on the street is that the executive producers are getting it together this week to talk about either the feature or Killer Mill of Two. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of committed because I am <laughs> Killer Miller. This is really exciting because when something is that well received, mm -hmm. you definitely want to continue on that path. And this is something that I think people really love mm -hmm. is old time shows, old Westerns sure. and to do it in the way that you guys have, I mean, just the images that I have seen alone are so profound. Thank I mean, you. they are nice <laughs> pictures. Thank you. Thank I love you. it. I it love it. And you're me, on the cover. It took me a year to grow out my hair and I get really curly. So it was down to here. When I pull it out, it was down to about here. It took a year to grow it out. I've never had long hair. The beard came out in about two weeks. So I had the beard quick. Okay. <laughs> so I was talking to RJ last week and I said, look, you know, I'm in. He goes, yeah, we're not worried about you at all. I go, uh, I need time to grow the hair. He starts laughing. He goes, you do whatever you need to do. Uh, but we're, we're talking this week and we're going to get it done. What I love about RJ, uh, his strategy 
you know, he's got such a following with his books. He wanted to come out with a short, get it to the film festivals, okay. build the following, build the following. So when we make the announcement that we're going to make a feature or another short, we already have a built-in audience. So it, it's, just, it's just brilliant the way he's doing it and brilliant the way he's looking at it. Um, and it's it just, there's so many people that are looking at him right now and wanting to throw money his way. And he really wants to keep it in house. He really wants to do it himself. Uh -huh. So, you know, he asked me for my dream team the other day, you know, who would you work with? If you had, if you had your druthers, who would be your best director, your best cinematographer? And I gave him a few names. So it's just, you never know. And there's my kitty behind me. I you love it. Know. I've been watching. You, you never know what's marketing. <laughs> And it really goes back to my mentality. I, I love to work and I love to keep busy and big project, small project, Rebecca, you know, you, you're, you're getting to know me. I just like to get out there, you know, and you never know what's going to hit. You never you don't. know. You don't. And yeah. let's talk for a minute though, too, about Killer Miller, because the plot is incredible. Thank you. So share with the audience a little bit about the storyline. Sure. What you can sure. divulge. I mean, sure. not have to go too much, but what you can divulge because this is a really, this is a really <laughs> interesting film. Well, so I'm Henry Killer Miller, and I've got the reputation of Killer Miller because I'm a grizzled federal marshal. Okay, and what do I do? Ride the countryside with my horse, and I'm a bounty hunter, really. And I'm so grizzled, and I'm so. I'm not going to say not caring, but so blase fair. Uh -huh. So I'm bringing in uh, Ben Tubbs, the actor, into uh, Dry Creek. Now, him and his brother committed an armed robbery. Now, set in the late 1890s, it's still kind of the Wild West. So I've got this reputation where they're shocked I'm bringing someone in alive. They're shocked. You know, what's what, what are you getting soft in your old age? What's going on? Why is this guy still alive? And the way the dynamic goes, the, the Ben Tubbs, the actor, he's going at me. He's needling me. He's needling me because he knows my reputation. Shoot him dead. Shoot him dead. Don't ask any questions. I got you. you you're done. But I keep him alive, which is interesting. Bring him, bring him to Dry Creek. And uh, he's really kind of he's gnawing at me. He's gnawing it. My brother's coming. My brother's coming. My brother's going to free me. He's going to kill you. And I'm at, the, I'm at the stage in my life with the character that, all right, if there's someone better than me, a, a faster gun, take me out. <laughs> if you can prove yourself better than Henry Killer Miller, do it. So I actually have a, 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 a shootout with this other character and my laissez-faire kind of blah, meh type of attitude scares the guy you know totally scares him and if you once you see it the actor is twice my size but he's not quicker than me on the draw so the way he goes before he clears leather i've got two bullets in him and he's down so and then there's a young gunfighter there's always a young a young padawan a young jedi that wants to learn from the master so you got that dynamic and it's just it's written so well and it's so tightly done. RJ's family filled in as extras. And it was, Sweet. yeah, it was a party-like atmosphere because in the saloon scene, there, it's a family reunion. So all the extras, a bunch of the actors were truly family. And it was just, it was just really warm. And I felt very, very comfortable. One thing I need to do as an actor, I need to befriend everyone on set. I need to be comfortable because I, I can't have, you know, someone having a bad day. I can't have a PA or, you know, a gaffer or someone having a bad day because I feed off of that energy, you know? I understand that. Yes. You know, so that's, I've got to make sure that if I'm going to be vulnerable as actors, we are vulnerable. I need to make sure that I'm 150% comfortable. And I truly was, I, I truly was the horse. I was on a California buckskin. His name is Hollywood, four years old. Oh. I was on him for nine hours a day. And, and they're really? asking me, yeah, they're asking me, Dennis, are you okay? I'm fine. I'm worried about the horse. 
Don't worry about me. I'm comfortable. <laughs> this kid, this kid's amazing. And it was such a beautifully trained horse. And being, you know, I've been riding now, uh, I guess about two years. It was such a pleasure. The director needed me to step back two paces and I'm, I'm busting chops and go beep, beep. And the horse is going back. Can you go to the left? Beep, beep. And the horse is moving just from a, a little, a little movement. So it was, it was so much fun. Um, Dry Creek, the property we're on, Les McDowell's property, truly is a Western town. Truly. There's a chapel on it. There's a saloon. Ooh. It's kind of like Deadwood. It kind of resembled when I first walked on set, I'm like, this is Deadwood. You know, this is cool. This is fun. And it just, actually, I just enjoyed it. The scene, having the scene set so realistic because yeah. that in essence is what it is mm -hmm. really helps you get into character. Don't you think? Totally. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. I, um, I consider myself a method actor. I thought so. <laughs> so I, I think I was sleeping in my cowboy boots. You know, RJ took care of me wardrobe wise, made sure everything was authentic. And you've seen the pictures. I was, <laughs> I was in character for the, uh, for the entire shoot. And I just, I loved it. They gave me the space to maintain and do what I need to do. And we just totally enjoyed it. That's so really I, good. I was so, they wanted somebody so dry. And again, it's showing range, but it's showing a different range. That is, can you be more unemotional? Okay. Can you be a little drier? We love your voice. We love your delivery. You've got a certain <laughs> raspness to your voice. We, we love what you sound like. Do it a little more unemotional. And I'm like, okay, give me a second. Boom. I was able to spit it back. So I love that. I love I love method acting because you really just completely consume that character and mm -hmm. and then deliver it in such a way that is so believable and relatable that people just even if there is somebody else that can't quite go into character sure. to that degree that alone can just bring the audience right on in and just cinch it. And I think that this particular film could be very episodic for a long period of time. That's what they did. So there's many ways they can go, as you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm signed up for the long haul. I, I told Angela Anderson, you know, my manager, um, I, have no, <laughs> I have no problem being typecast as Taylor Miller. <laughs> I mean, how bad can life be? Oh, that's that's not oh. Dennis, that's Killer Miller. Okay. How bad can life be? That'd be awesome. Well, now, I think when you spoke about range and with what's coming out with Daddy We're Back, I think that, I mean, we're talking uh, night and day night characters, and day. Yeah. you know, so I, I don't know if you'll get typecast in just one, <laughs> one particular thing because of how versatile you are and you do have something else to share with us too um unlawful duty yes tell me about it as of right now sunil kulnari uh writer producer director i think we have about 150,000 views on amazon prime that's huge i don't know what that again it's all new to me so i i, I can't quantify it per se but we're doing the feature film. It's a great script. I, I read it about six times already in January. I'm starring opposite uh, two different A-listers that I'm not sure if I'm able to drop the names yet. Um, I'm not going to drop the names yet, but uh, I'm, I'm working opposite and I've got about 10 different scenes with these two A-listers. So that is exciting. Again, it's like, it's, it's like the perfect storm, Rebecca. Everything's starting to come together. Um, between Killer Miller, Daddy, we're back. You know, between unlawful duties. It's all coming together at the same time. So, you know, and I believe in karma. I believe in manifesting. I believe in goals and, you know, affirmations and stuff like that. I, I read my stuff twice a day and I always kind of keep, keep my goals forefront in my head. You know, when we won cons, uh, Killer Miller won cons. Um, that's like an Academy Award for an independent film. 
It is. It is. You know, and that's. But I think it's overwhelming. Isn't, isn't, Dennis, I think this isn't about, I mean, just luck or karma or whatever. This is because you have been really pursuing your dream and being active as an actor and getting involved with as many things as you can and getting yourself out there. And I want to share that with the audience because hard work is what pays off or your focused or continued effort is what pays off. You can't just do one thing and hope that that is going to be the be all to end all. You've got to put the time in. And as you're doing that, some of the things people say, well, that's, that's not really a big enough role, but here's something to think about. The more you do, uh-huh. and this is not you, I mean, you know this already, but I'm sharing this with the audience because I really want to let them know that the more that they do, the better they become at understanding. So if you want to be an actor, you understand what's going to happen on set, what different directors are going to have you do, what kinds of things that you're going to be able to do to bring upon yourself to get into certain characters. And you'll be able to see if you're a method actor or how, I mean, there's so much, so many things, but you have to immerse yourself in doing different things to gain the experience and the insight that it's going to take to get you on the journey to the right places where this certain thing is just going to, to pay off. There are some people who might make their big, big break at, on, I mean, they were discovered, they had their show and that was it. Awesome. Boom. But that's yeah. not the typical. <laughs> not me. Uh, I, I, I had my kids over this weekend for a barbecue. And my son was, was, was playing with me. He goes, what are you? A 20, he goes, what are you a 26 year overnight success? I go, okay. I go, does it matter <laughs> if it took two days, two months, 26 years? And he's like, no, ah, really doesn't. Now he's 22 and he's so wise for his age. And it, it was just interesting. And we were talking about the kind of the family game plan and stuff like that. Just kind of dreaming and thinking about the goals. And you've got to be focused. And here's the thing. You're 100% right, Rebecca. I always use the analogy. analogy it's like going to the gym. You walk into the gym, you, you go on the, uh, on the bench press and you load up 250. You haven't worked out in 25 years. How's that going to look? Yes. Horrible. Terrible. You've got to do your reps. You've got to start small. And I, I'm going to be teaching a class um, uh, next few weeks, whatnot. Just basic stuff. You need to do your reps. Doing your reps, you need to go to that audition. You need to be that extra on set. You need to spend 12 hours uh, being an extra, being a PA, whatever you need to do. You need to build your comfortability, your knowledge, your credibility, and you need to learn what things mean on set. Okay. You can't, you can, when you get to a certain level, you can get things out of a book, but unless you're there immersed in the entire situation, you're not going to get it. And um, one thing I tell everyone, Regardless of what you're doing, if you're walking uh, in Disney, in Disneyland, and you're supposed to have your spouse, well, walk with an intention. You know, yeah. think about your character. You're just an extra. You're going to be on screen for a nanosecond, but show something. Do some development. Get into your own mind and build a story with that actor you're working with. That'll serve you so much because if you start doing that, you're going to think that way all the way through, you know, and you never know who's looking. I've been on set many, 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 many times. Yeah. You don't know what the DP has in mind. You don't know what the assistant director has in mind. I almost every time someone comes up to me and says, Hey man, you know, I really love what you do. I'd love to talk to you about blah, blah project. And I'm like, Hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Let's get this wrap first. Let's stay focused. Right. You know, I can, you know, I want to stay focused on this. Let's talk next week. Let's talk next month. But I'd love to work with you. You just never that's know. A, that's a really good point because some of the direct distractions can really distract sure. and, um, and can be a game changer in not the right way. Mm-hmm. So I like what you have said before I let you go. I would like you to share with the audience 
what you do, um, the services that you give as a teacher that you have, you teach acting. I, um, I've taken two courses in my entire career, uh, both in New York with great, great people. I, I studied at New York Performance Works. Angela Montabano was my uh, beginning actor, commercial acting class. An Italian woman, uh, just imagine New York, doesn't put up with any garbage. You know, here I come in with a suit on, bright eyed, bush and jump. You know, I'm Italian, so I know how to deal with Italian mothers and damn, she just cracked the whip. Um, I'm taking a lot of what she done, okay? I still keep in touch with her on Facebook, beautiful woman. You need to be ready. The, the basic commercial acting course that I'm gonna teach, it's gonna be an intensive workshop. You're gonna be reading copy on camera because when you go to an audition, you don't have time to practice. You have the copy, the script, you're, you're in line with 10, 20 strangers that want your job and they want your job and you're very, everyone's very competitive. It's not all that friendly at times. I'm going to create an environment where we're going to be doing the reps. We're going to be out there. We're going to be getting stronger week to week. You're going to see how ugly I look on camera for the first time. You're going to see reading copy and how I'm stuttering and I can't get, you know, the beats and the tempo down. That's what we're going to work on. So that is, I'm really excited to kind of bring that um, you know, to, to people. And I've got a bunch of people signed up already that are, really senior in the business, actors that I know and love in Florida, and a bunch of newbies. Somebody's going to get something out, out of it, and I know that, and it's going to make them that much stronger. I know the course I took was um, was a basic scene structure and basic scripting from uh, Mark Reihart, uh, you know, again, at New York Performance Works. He taught me how to break down a script. He taught me how to take my beats, how to take my pause. And really just how to inhale the character, you know, and really, you know, he, he hit me with certain things that really brought out my, um, my method acting, if you would, mm -hmm. you know, because I've read a lot of Tom Hanks. I, I've read a lot of uh, Rob Lowe has books out there, Tom Cruise, uh, Ethan Hawke. You've got to come prepared. You've got to come yes. prepared. The casting director, the director, the DP, the executive producer, they don't have time for you. They don't. It's all about money. It's business. It's it is not business. show friends. It's show business. So I know if there's one of me, oh, there's 10 million of me going for that same role, but I'm going to outwork you. <laughs> I'm going to come so prepared that I'm going to outwork you. And that's what I do. That's I'm, pretty neat. I'm not being boisterous. I just know the work ethic that I put into every character that I, that I do. And Hard work is what's going to separate me from everybody else. Hard work and preparedness. Tom Hanks said, your job is to come off book, memorize the script, bring 10 to 15 ideas, and be ready to work. Ethan Hawke says, we get paid to play the fool. What a better career. You know, you love what you do. You get to do things that other people can't do. And I guess people like what I do. <laughs> they sure do. At least all of Europe. You. Dennis, do you also teach how to prepare for an open, unscripted edition, uh, audition? That's going to be part of the class I'm teaching. That's going to be that's going to be part of the class. I, I really I have an orientation this Thursday down here in Florida, over here in Florida. So I really want to see what comes out. I know what direction I want to take the class because it's going to be a beginner class. And I really want to see the dynamic of who's coming. Apparently, we have an 80-year-old uh, lady down here that signed up for it, which is exciting. Oh, it I'm is. Gonna I'm going to learn so much from her. And then we have a bunch of 20 something So it's going to be a very interesting dynamic. And I like, I like dialogue. I'm not going to stand at a lecture and dictate. That's not my style. I want to sit in a U-shape. I want to talk, answer questions. I want to build rapport. And oh, by the way, you're going to see yourself on camera. And oh, by that. the way, everyone's going to critique you because that's how we learn. That's how we do. I absolutely love this. So let's do a couple of things here real quick. Let's share with the audience where they can catch 
glue TV and sure. anything else you want to connect them to, sure. but also how they can enroll in one of your classes or if you'll be doing future virtual classes or anything like that. I, I, this takes me back to an audition I have that I just, oh man, it was completely open, unscripted. And there, it was a cattle call. I mean, there was just hundreds of people there and um, I was very, very green, had no, no idea what to expect. So this is pretty exciting. And I think that there's a lot of others who right now will feel that way. And if they know that these are the things that you're going to be sharing with them and teaching them and equipping them, I'd like them to get involved. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm on social media. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram, Dennis Mallon, M-A-L-L-E-N. I'm more than willing to help anyone with anything. And I've been thinking about kind of doing the course kind of virtually, doing a Zoom course or, you know, whatever works. This is my first foray into that. And my biggest concern is that there's so many projects going on right now. Everything's going to diverge at the same time. We've got the Italians, the Italian crime drama. Zach Dieppe, the producer, writer. I talk to him at least once a week. And he's waiting for COVID to subside in, in the Northeast in New York and California. We're going to be doing that. I just did um, I just did a 1950s noir film about the Howie Mansion. I got that because people saw Unlawful Duties. So I'm telling you this because everything kind of parlays itself. But please find me on social media, Dennis Mallon. And uh, I am thinking, I want to see how this course goes first before I kind of wrap it and put it up on, uh, you know, put it up on uh, Zoom like this. Okay. But, you know, I, I have received kind of positive feedback so far. And uh, I just want to get one under my belt first. You know, love it. I, I want to get, there, get it under my belt and play from there. So. Well, thank you so much for sharing and giving us an update with everything that's going on. I really love what you are doing and I am excited for the audience to get engaged with everything that you have going on, especially checking out uh, Daddy, We're Back on Glue TV, going over to Amazon Prime and seeing Unlawful Duties yeah. um, and more and more. So I just encourage all of you to keep listening he's dennis will be back here <laughs> repeatedly so yeah. i also ask that you'll share everything with your friends and your family dennis thank you so much for being with us again i am just so excited about what you have going i, I just kind of want to wrap up and run over to the tv i know that's <laughs> not the way we do things but that's how i'm feeling right now and i hope that the audience is too thank you dennis Rebecca, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank and thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Rebecca Sounds Reveille. Oh, if you are getting ready to turn this off, go turn, go check out Glue TV and turn that on or go over to Amazon Prime. There is things for you to do if you don't have anything to do right now. And if you want to do a virtual party, call up some of your friends and see if you can all start watching at the same time and chat back and forth and then include us on what you think. Let us know what's going on. We'd love to hear your feedback and we want you to connect. So thanks for tuning in and we will see you next week.